children to fluently learn things like letter identification, sounds, and even sight words can be just as complicated as pulling teeth. Better yet, it can be just as complicated as pulling hair. And that is why in this video, I'm going to share with you 10 really fun coding games that you can teach to get children to fluently master things like letter identification, sounds, and even sight words. And make sure you stick around all the way to the end because the last game I'm going to share with you is actually a collection of games. <laughs> Our first phonics game can work on all of these skills, but I'm going to teach you by using sounds and letter identification. So our first game is toss it in the bucket. And for this game, you will need balls or you can even use bean bags, some buckets, and you'll also need some flashcards. And if you don't have flashcards, then you can simply use some sticky notes. Grab some of the letters that you're working on and tape those flashcards onto buckets. Then line the buckets up on one side of the room. Give children the balls or the bean bags and they will be across the room. Then you'll either say the name of a letter and they'll have to toss their ball into that basket or you can make this even more challenging by saying the sound of a letter and then they have to identify the letter that makes that sound. Now if you're doing with this with sight words you'll do it the exact same way and you'll just simply say the sight word. Now if you wanted to do this for points you can certainly add a little twist by having the child who actually scores the most correct baskets win the game. For most of these games you're pretty much going to be using flashcards so I'm not going to keep saying that over and over again. The really good thing about these flashcards is they also come with blends so if you're teaching things like blends or digraphs then these flashcards are also useful for those as well. Alright so our second game is grab it. For this game you will spread the flashcards all across the room. Now make sure they're not all piled up because you do not want children to get hurt. Then you will say a letter sound or even say the exact letter or sight word and children have to be the first one to actually grab that flashcard off the floor. Now make sure they don't go and fight each other. You can say the first person whose hand touch it, they are the person that gets to grab it. At the end of the game, all the flashcards will be picked up off the floor and whichever child has the most flashcards in their hand would win the game. Bop it. Twist it. Hey. Dixie cups or you can use some sort of cups that kids can destroy. Then what you're going to do is write letters or sight words on the different cups and then spread the cups around on a table or you can use the floor. Then as you say the different letter names, sounds, or even sight words, children have to smash the cup that correlates with whatever you just said. Now you know the boys out there are going to love this game. Now if you've been on this channel for a long time then you know that I love a good scavenger hunt. So I couldn't do finest games without sharing my favorite one which is a scavenger hunt. Simply put gather those same flashcards but this time instead of putting them on the floor you get to hide them. And you can hide the flashcards all around the room and children have to actually find Find the flashcard that correlates with the letter or sound or sight word that you just said. And this means that all children are actually trying to find the same flashcard at the same time. Now you can make this game even more exciting by turning off the lights and giving each child a flashlight to play the exact same game. Now with the flashlight version, instead of walking around the room trying to find the flashcards, you'll turn off the lights and children will use their flashlights to actually find the letters or sight words around the room. The first child that actually signs their light on the correct flashcard would get a point and whichever child has the most points at the end would win the game. Now where are all my online teachers or even teachers that have a smart board or Promethean board in their classroom and want to teach smarter not harder because our next game is a digital game yes one that you just simply have to display and hit play and our next game is guess what 
And the really cool thing about this digital game is I have it for both letter recognition, sounds, and sight words. With this game, what you'll do is display the game on the screen. Children will have the opportunity to interact with the game by simply yelling out loud the sight words or even letter sounds. Not only is this game perfect for just simply displaying it in your classroom, but it can integrate so well with all of your digital learning days. Who out there likes bugs? I know, I don't, but I can certainly guarantee you that with these bugs, your children will love them. And then Nate's game is Slap the Bug! Now with this game, there are also two versions of this game. One with actual letters and one with sight words. Let me share with you how to set up the game and then I'll explain how to actually play the game. Spread out all the bugs on a table or even the floor if you don't want children standing up. Then designate one person to be the actual dealer or the leader of the game. That person will have the entire stack of flashcards and they will determine each word or each letter. Then all the other players will gather around in a nice circle and as the dealer flips over a flashcard they will simply say the sight word or say the letter and then all the other players must be the first player to slap the actual bug. Now I've seen this game where teachers actually give children the actual fly swatters that makes the game even more fun but children can certainly use their hand. Whichever child has their hand or fly swatter at the bottom is the one that actually gets to collect the flashcard that the dealer had in their hand. Once the deck is completely cleared out, all players will count up how many flashcards they collected during the game, and then of course the child with the most flashcards will be the winner, and they will be the next dealer of the next round of the game. I love playing Slap the Bugs during my small group time. Children were in the corner playing by themselves. Now the next game is called Guess It. And with this game, you will actually write down different sight words or letters on a sheet of paper. Then you'll put that paper facing up on the bottom of either a tray or a cooking sheet. Then you'll do the same thing with another sight word or another letter until you have a good amount of actual cookie sheets or trays. On top of the sheet of paper, you are going to spread out sand. This way, children cannot see the letters or sight words. Then, each child will be given one tray. When you say go, children will have to use one finger, their index finger, to find and trace that letter or that sight word. The first child to unveil and actually say the name of their letter or sight word will get a point. Once all children have done that, then you'll simply swap the trays by having every single child pass their tray to the person to the right until every child has had the opportunity to trace and say every single sight word or letter that is on the trays. Now, up until now, you've been able to use all of these games no matter if you're teaching letter identification, sounds, or even sight words. However, the next three games will be divided up based on the skill. So for the next two games, we're going to be talking about actually getting children to be fluent with sight words. And then the last game, like I stated, is a collection of games that all deal with letter identification. Not only just letter identification, but uppercase and lowercase letter identification and even matching the two. So let's get into our next game, which is four corners. Now, if you've been on my channel for a while, then you will know I love to get children active and moving when it comes to learning, and four corners is by far one of my favorite games to do just that. The other really good thing about four corners is that it can be played even if you're online. So if you're online, allow children to either write on sticky notes or give them sheets of paper that say A, B, C, or D. But if you're in an actual room, if you're in person, then go ahead and put signs up in each corner of your classroom room saying A, B, C, or D. Now, the Four Corners game that I'm referring to is actually a digital game, meaning like before, all you have to do is display the game and click play and the directions will be shared with you. On the screen, a sight word will be stated and then there are four options that correlate with that sight word. Children must identify the sight word spelled correctly out of one of those four options and then walk to that designated corner of the 
the room. The other really good thing about this game is then it shares the answer and then children know immediately if they answered and identified the correct sight word. So our next game is a free game and it is sight word charades. This is another game that can be displayed whether your children are online or in person. With this game you will simply display the sight word charade board and then divide up all of your children into teams. Now I play charades a little bit different and I play in the course of rounds. Each round is 60 seconds. During a team's round they will choose one designated person to stand up and act out different sight words. Now they have to act out one of the sight words that is displayed on the screen. They have to act this out without using any words. The object of the game for that team is to guess as many correct sight words within each round. Once a team guesses the correct sight word, the person that is acting out the word simply chooses another sight word displayed on the screen. At the end of 60 seconds, if you're using a screen that has a dry erase board, I suggest you actually marking off which words were actually guessed. This way, children aren't repeating the same words. And then, of course, the next team would go and the game would continue until all the sight words are used up. And then you'll simply count up the correct number of sight words each team gets and then whichever team gets the most correct sight words would win the game. Now our last game like I stated is all about letter identification and our last game are alphabet folder games. Now I have all of these games inside of my ultimate learning binder but you can certainly put these games in a file folder. Now because these are a collection of games I'm just gonna simply go over to my daughter's ultimate learning binder and go over each game with you. So this is Kendall's learning binder um, and as you see it is an ultimate binder so we have everything from colors to her dates her fillings um, color sorting um, and within this there are different activities now I have a section in here that is completely dedicated to just her alphabet so I use this page since <laughs> she already has this um, so it starts off with like C she has to circle the pictures that start with the sound that the letter c makes um and as you see she did castle crab car corn and then children have the opportunity to see how to write the letter c and then they have opportunity to trace the uppercase c identify the uppercase c and then do the same thing with the lowercase c so after children have the opportunity to do all of that throughout the entire alphabet do 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 try to go all the way to z all right all right all right <laughs> all right so once children finish with z they can now begin the binder activity so for the first game you have help the librarian so the librarian slip and fail while she was sorting all the books in the library help her sort all the books by letter place the correct book on the correct shelf so these are the books and of course when a child is playing the books are not attached so they would literally you know take them off and then as they're sorting they're going to have all the alphabets you know on the floor and then they are literally putting the books back on the designated shelf so they're really matching you know all the a's all the b's and kind of sorting based on a letter um so of course there here's all the ends of the alphabet all right so then after they do that um then you have the missing letters so oh man the letters keep running away out of the house du, du, du. help put all the letters back in place by filling in the missing alphabet letters in the correct order so with this they will fill in the missing letters of the alphabet okay my left hand is about like a kid there we go <laughs> um and then we'll literally fill in all of the missing alphabets all right so after that game you have the case match which is duh, 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 you are on a mission to match all the uppercase and the lowercase letters the uppercase letters are all over the place some went on a boat others went in the bathtub or even on a school bus can you match the letters and so for this game depending on the letter depends on where the letter went to go hide um and so this game really matches uppercase letters with lowercase letters um and children will literally you know put the capital a with the lowercase a and etc um and then some letters are in a bathtub same thing matching capital 
with lowercase or uppercase with lowercase should i say um and then other letters went on a school bus same thing matching uppercase and lowercase letters um in addition to that game you also have find my mommy somehow the baby animals separated from their mothers can you help the baby animals by drawing a line from the uppercase letter to the lowercase letter so with this game um you see there's an example from the capital m to the lowercase m they'll draw a line from capital Z to the lowercase Z. Oh, I need a better marker. And then children will continue to do that, you know, throughout all of the pages. Now, if you want to see more about the ultimate learning binder, I will put all that information down below. Of course, after she does her alphabet and letters, there are some counting all the way to 25 um, activities that she can do as well. Now, having all of these exciting phonics games are absolutely amazing to implement within your instruction and will even help with fluency with all of these phonics skills. However, if you don't know how to actually teach things such as sight words, it'll kind of be like driving in reverse. So that's why it's important for you to watch this video so I can actually share with you how to actually teach sight words so that you're not doing it wrong.